Yo, what's up aliens? Ahi here. So I saw a lot of comments last week uh, about y'all wanting to see my own routing um, after I showed y'all uh, Skrillex's routing from uh, the videos that he posted of Mumbai Power. And so I'm going to show y'all my routing. Uh, I've had this template set, set up for... I think about a year now. Um, I really, I sort of developed this template after I took some classes with uh, Getter and Virtual Riot and uh, Brills Toro Toro and um, uh, Dodge and Fusky. Yeah, they organized these really cool classes in LA that I attended. And so I learned sort of this and, and heard some other things about how Skrillex set his up, and so I was guessing on how he did it. And now that I saw his videos, I might change mine a little bit, but um, I just wanted to show you all what I've been doing, and then I'll, maybe I'll talk about what I might change in the future. And also I noticed a, there was a lot of comments about actually showing a track that uses the routing rather than just showing the routing with no audio or no example behind it. So I'm going to show you all a track of mine called heat that came out on play me records uh back in january um so let's get into this so obviously you can see first of all i'm super <laughs> i love color coding and um it, i just like having it all super nice and neat um you'll notice there's like very few groups um and i'm in ableton uh live nine so um i still I'm not doing the groups within groups, like in 10. Uh, but I've got vocals, basically chords, melodic things here, uh, basses, a kick and snare drum group, and a top drums group, an effects group, and a pre-master, and that's all. Um, and then the master, master chain over here. Um, but uh, I sort of set it up this way because I was really inspired by George Martin of the Beatles. He's sort of considered the fifth Beatle by some people. And uh, he was like their, their producer. And he had to fit like all these different takes and tracks into only four tracks. Because like they were doing it on four track cassette tape players back then. And I think like limiting the amount of things that you send to your master, um, I, I think... I thought was like a really interesting technique and so I've really implemented that in all of my all of my songs um, so I'll, I'll show you all a little bit of the routing here it's pretty similar to the Skrillex thing else it's pretty cool but um, also talk about how I might change it but so my vocals and chords are going to directly to the master and also with my effects and essentially my Basses and my drums um, are going to the pre-master channel here. Um, and the reason why I thought about it this way is that my my basses and my drums are generally really compressed, like way more compressed than like the the melodic things or the um, the vocals um, or the effects. Um, and, and so I, I wanted the the vocals, melodics, and effects to have more dynamic range to them and not be compressing them as much. And so I put them on the top layer um, and then uh, underneath it, going through the pre-master is the basses and the, the drums. In this particular song, I put all my drums in the kick and snare and I'll break that down, I'll show you in a second. I didn't even use the top drums at all in this track. Um, and like I said, these are, and the reason why I'm telling you that is that this isn't a hard rule, you know, with music, it's whatever sounds good, sounds good, you know? And uh, I just, I wanted to show you how I break my own rules, you know? Uh, usually with top drums, I'd put like cymbals and stuff in there, but this track doesn't have very many cymbals. It's got some hi-hats and, and some crashes, but not much other than that. I think I might even have some crashes here in the effects section. Sometimes I'll put them in here too. Yeah, it looks like there's crashes here in the effects. So that's sort of actually doing the same thing because my top drums are going directly to the master because uh, I don't compress the cymbals and, and whatnot as much. Uh, so it's effectively doing the same thing by putting them in the effects group. Uh, anyways, 
Uh, and how things I might change this in the future is I might add two more pre-master channels before that goes to the actual pre-master and I might use one for specifically for sub bases and one for everything else that I want to send uh, through there um, just because I saw that that's essentially what Skrillex's racks were doing he had the the hype chain which was essentially just the sub and then the basic chain which was everything else that was wasn't the drums like i'd send the drums still directly to the pre-master but i would send like chords and top basses to the basic chain perhaps um maybe some effects also uh, on these groups uh, how i set up these groups uh, I have a lot of effects already on them um, in my template, like EQs, like here on the vocals, I know I don't want to have any sub in my vocals, so I've cut out um, all of the frequencies below 116, it sort of changes per track, but um, here in the chord section, there aren't really any chord things going at the same time as my drop, and so... I keep that open down here, but oftentimes I'll automate this, um, the the uh, low cut, and I'll cut out the sub frequencies just on the part where I have sub bass um, popping through. And here on the bass section, I put, also on the chords I forgot to mention, I have a limiter, and it's just the Pro L default setting, nothing else on there. I might change that in the future. Um, I thought it was really interesting how Skrillex specifically used um, that like vocal um, preset um, with the long release. I thought that was really, really interesting. And also I have my side chains already set up um, on, on my um, routing. So I side chain, uh, I have like a channel specifically for the side chain kick and I actually side chain uh, to a white noise trigger. And then also I side chain to the snare. Um, sometimes nowadays I, I sort of multi-band my side chains. So that way the kick is only affecting everything below 100 and some odd hertz and the, and the snare is affecting everything like 200 hertz and up, whatever. Um, but, you know, it worked well on this track. And then also on the kick and snare, I always have a, a limiter and an EQ, though I don't really use the EQ on this track, but I have the limiter, same, just default preset. And the pre-master channel, I just have just that limiter at the default setting as well. And then on my master channel, I have the pro L default setting when I'm working on things. And also I have Voxingo Span. And if you do not have this plugin, go get it right now. It's free. Um, is this was a game changer for me when I learned how to use that. Um, and uh, yeah, what else? So, and I changed I change this. I don't, I guess, no, I did use the default setting in this. Um, cool. Well, I could sort of show you all some, some more things in here. Uh, oh yeah, the side chain to the noise. I can show you all that real quick. So yeah, I actually have this side chain kick channel here and it's muted um so it's just being sent to those triggers and it's just this a blip of white noise and i literally just copy it whenever there's a downbeat of the kick i have these on this particular track it's sort of like super swung kind of track so i've got these sort of swung kicks on here but they're sort of like off kicks and so i don't really need them to cut through the mix as much and so I don't side chain to those um but here I guess I could play some of this yeah that would be cool right uh, also you can see I, I I have a lot of markers up here to indicate different sections it, it helps me stay organized so what we're hearing is um a lot of synths that I recorded in my Prophet X. That's uh, my analog synth. And you can see, uh, I want to talk about how I get really clean subs. I'm going to pause it for a second. Um, I EQ out the low end of almost every, yeah, every element in the, in here. Um, I guess I don't on there. Yeah, I do on there. These guys, yep. 
low cutting this one i think this has the bass in it yeah this was like the bass element for this section and so i didn't cut it out there and that's why i didn't low cut um low cut the eq here is because i wanted one thing to go one sub element to go through it's not even a strong sub element Excuse me while I shift my computer around. Um, I need to cool it off. I'm, I actually have my computer on a uh, a thing of I, of blue ice just to cool it down while I'm running the software. Um, uh, so that sound right there. That that's actually the drop line. Um, I think y'all might find this interesting. So here's my main bass. And I actually, you'll see I have this automated cue. Yeah, it's like moving around. I think that's pretty neat. Because it's like teasing, teasing like what's to come. Sorry about the CPU drop out. Oof, that's pretty bad. Sorry about it. Um, also, let's see here on the this thing. Yeah, you can hear this flat. And I do a lot of my volume by turning down the volume on the actual sample itself, or I'll turn down the volume here um, on the track as opposed to doing the volumes on the on the actual uh, groups because I like to keep them at full as full as i possibly can um just to get the maximize the amount of loudness okay let's get to the drop i keep on talking Check this Can we make it Sorry for those CPU dropouts, guys. It's I'm doing my best. Um, anyways, uh, I yeah, this track called Heat, and here I'll solo the um, kick, the uh, drum sequence. So actually, I start off with like this break, this sound, and I just sort of chopped it up and recreated like made my own break out of it and really i think in there yeah it's got these really oh wait no i actually uh i rewarped it to be even more swung than the original um and yeah so i created a new pattern out of an old sample and so here's the, the drum pattern so it's got some some hi hats in there and some kicks, uh, snares and the, these off kicks, uh, which I think are really interesting. It's got some. Um, I actually use this singer vocalizer, which is one of my um, Ableton racks, uh, on the uh, snare to get some reverb out of it. You know, I think that's a. But then it's layered in with this more percussive kind of snare um, and then here on the bass line it's these are different audio clips that I recorded from serum and then I chopped them up and so it's like this is one take that's another take and I'm like sort of going back and forth between them and then like here it's like you know, um, that's like a lot of automation in, in, uh, in Serum. And then like here on the second drop, drop two, it's a lot of like cutting. Like here, I'll play the full drop. So it's like da ka da da ka da da ka da 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 And also you can see that the 
my my bases are not blown out and i think that's important like what i mean by blown out it's like doesn't look like that um because it gives me some room to process them which i don't do that much processing i just use my magic box which is essentially like a lot of like ott and compression uh mixed together like here i'll play uh and if you guys don't already have like my uh what i call my magic ableton racks um definitely go check those out um i'll provide a link below but check out what this without it does a lot um yeah what else can i say um oh yeah there were some interesting um i guess it's sort of a, a variety tutorial i want to show you all my routing but there's a lot of interesting things in here i thought i'd cover um like there's some interesting panning i think yeah or i'm like panning the Um, those vocals are sort of interesting. Another thing um, to, I think one of my, th the favorite uh, Ableton racks in the, um, in my Magic Ableton racks is the Robot Maker. And that's what gets this, that vocal right there. Um, here, I'll remove these. So Bass on the beat. it's pretty dry and boring. Bass on the beat. And here's the rap vocalizer. Bass on the beat. Gives a little grit, and then the robot maker on the beat. gives it that that like Bass on the beat. that weird delay kind of sound to it. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'll provide a link to those below. Um, oh yeah, I sh I should go back to the drums. Um, <laughs> yeah, here the magic box also does a lot here. <laughs> Listen to the drum. So this is the drum box. So without the magic box, and I have the saturator on here that's that's limiting it as well. So the saturator now with the magic box. You can tell it really brings out a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, yeah, and there's just like some weird percussion in here, like these little zaps and things like that around the edges, I think to sort of keep it sonically interesting. Um, and also on these things, you'll see I've low cut out any sub in them if, if they are going along with um, the if there's any sub happening here on the drop, I generally cut them out here. So that way it doesn't create sub bass phase cancellation, which I could create a whole tutorial about that sometime. Um, here in the effects section, anything interesting? Um, yeah, it's like, look at all these effects. They're all building up like from here to here, here to here. They're all trying to go build up to hear and that's sort of I should create a whole tutorial about build theory as well um, it's all about creating momentum and adding momentum upon momentum um, and then here on my mastering I'm using uh, ozone's um, isotope ozone um, it's not that much quieter I get a lot of my volume out of the mixing process, which is something that specifically I thought about when um, learning about Skrillex's process um, and, and from the other people is, you know, getting your volume and your your mix uh, out of your mix um, and then mastering is really just like fine balancing it really. Um, and what am I doing in here? I'm using the EQ. I don't know why I don't, I'm not using them all in one plugin, but um I think the lows were too loud. That's the biggest thing I see in new producers tracks is their sub is too loud. Um, sometimes even on my tracks, the sub's too loud. So I dipped that down and I've boosted the highs a little bit there. Like I said, it's just like balancing. 
uh, the spectrum. Here is some multi-band EQing. Kind of like to make this area pop. Kind of pull down that area. Um, and then here's some uh, making the sub into mono and spreading the highs right there. And then this this thing is just the default setting. The majority of the, the final limiting there. Okay, well, um, I hope that was useful. And um, definitely, if you haven't already, go check out those Ableton racks. You saw that they made a pretty huge difference in this track. And also, um, oops, don't like it when that happens. Also, um, if you guys have any ideas of, of tutorials that you'd like me to do, let me know in the comments. Um, I know someone uh, was commenting on re having me recreate the uh, EPROM's Hurricane, um, and I actually did that on my analog synth, and also I figured out how to redo his vocals, um, the effects on the vocals and whatnot, so that could be a cool tutorial. or. Um, yeah, if you guys have any, any other ideas, let me know in the comments. Bye. Peace, Aileen.